It's time for Let's Watch a Death Battle. Tifa versus Yang. Punching! The most useful language in the world when words fail, and these two lovely ladies are fluent in it. Yang Zhao Long, the adventurous huntress from Ruby. And I'm not rooting for the Final Fantasy heavy Yang. hitter with enormous power. He's with <laughs> boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills. For Tifa, would win Tifa must win. Battle. The world of Remnant is, well, crazy. Vicious creatures called Grim run wild, entire cities have gone to waste, and every single weapon is also a gun. Even nunchucks. Oh, that sounds like Disneyland to me. The happiest, most gun-filled place on Earth. Luckily, the world is protected by the Huntsmen and Huntresses, an elite group of expertly trained warriors. And where else would you get the training to I actually watched this. Monsters? This whole series when I heard about Yang, because I had never heard of her before. I know who Tifa is, but didn't know who Yang was. But it was a good series. her mother to mysterious circumstances, pretty short though. Being trained all her life by her hero legend of an uncle, Yang Zhao Long was accepted into Beacon Academy. It's kind of like Hogwarts, except replace wands and books with swords, sniper rifles, and giant transforming scythes. Man, this place just keeps getting better and better. Seriously, I know where I'm gonna retire now. <laughs> a natural fighter and thrill seeker at heart, Yang fit right in and soon found herself a member of the color coordinated team, Ruby. So led fabulous. By her younger sister, Ruby. Because that's not confusing at all. I'm talking about kicking off the semester with a bang. I always kick my semesters off with the Yang. <laughs> eh? Guys? Am I right? Anyway, Yang's time at Beacon was well spent, and she became the master of punching all the things. See, while Yang's fellow teammates wield a scythe, a couple swords, some big guns, Yang's style of combat takes a more direct approach. Yeah, she does, with her shotgun gauntlets. Her two golden bracelets aren't just stylish, they extend to form a weapon called the Ember Celica. These are some really with cool weapons. Punch, the Ember Celica fires off a flash of kinetic energy, blasting a foe with an explosion of force and a beautiful sound. I'm so hungry! To top it off, these concussive blasts can fly several hundred feet. Yang is one of the few people I know who can punch a bird out of the sky. That's what you get for crapping on my car. In addition, like <laughs> most huntresses, Yang can manifest her soul as an aura. Aura can be Boom used stick. to block deadly attacks and heal minor wounds, and Yang's is no different. But my favorite way she uses her aura is when she goes Super Saiyan. <laughs> Many hunters and huntresses possess a semblance, a special power unique to them that makes Beacon Academy look a little more like the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. Yang's semblance absorbs damage from hits she takes, adding them to her own physical power. After taking just two attacks from a mech suit, she was strong enough to shatter the whole thing in one go. Unfortunately, her semblance does not increase her aura's defense, so she feels the full force of everything that hits her aura, and can only absorb power so long as she remains conscious. Luckily, she's pretty tough. Yang survived a punch that easily smashed her through a concrete pillar. You know, the ones designed to hold up entire bridges? And during a food fight, remember this is high school, Yang was knocked up into the air and did not come back down for about 100 seconds. More than enough time to reach terminal velocity. Wow. This means upon landing, she took an impact of nearly 50 tons of force. And stood right back up like it was nothing. <laughs> wow. What a waste of good food. Despite this, Yang can only take so much. Her aura has a limit, as does her short temper. Pushing both of these too far leaves her extremely vulnerable. Like when this ice cream lady knocked her out because Yang had been fighting monsters all day with no sleep. It's also worth noting Yang is less adaptable when fighting against foes specializing in kicks. Still, she's oh, confident she's that's gonna be the bad. best in her class and dedicated to graduating Hunter's School so she can travel the world fighting everyone just for the thrill of it. <laughs> Tifa's got all kinds of crazy kicks. <laughs> <laughs> Far to the west on the planet Gaia, here comes a small my girl. Mountain village called Nibelheim. At first glance, this town appears calm and peaceful, not worth a second look. Until a sword wielding goth guy found his alien mother hidden inside. He's celebrated with fireworks. 
After losing her parents and watching the madman Sephiroth burn her hometown to ashes, Tifa Lockhart joined Avalanche, a group dedicated to protecting the planet from ecological harm and meteors. Speaking of meteors, check out the size of the- Boomstick! <laughs> I was talking about the meteor. Sure you were. Anyway, Tifa was thrust into the stereotypical gender role of housekeeper by maintaining the hidden Avalanche home base, Seventh Heaven. But it wasn't all bad because it also doubled as a bar. And she doubled as a bouncer. Now, I've been thrown out of my fair share of bars for totally illegitimate reasons, but not even I would urinate on the Seventh Heaven jukebox with Tifa on guard. Smart choice, since she is a master of close quarters combat. Tifa is a faint brawler, adept at surprising foes with quick, powerful strikes. And as she traveled with her friend Cloud to save the planet, she learned seven legendary techniques, the Limit Breaks. Awesome, they're so awesome. Accessing her inner gambler, Tifa's Limit Breaks include rapid fire punches, explosive throwdowns, and summoning dolphins who uppercut people? Well, that's just awesome. And if she manages to throw all of them in order, she charges the last of her limit energy into one final titanic punch. The final heaven. Yep. Fuck you, squirrel! <laughs> Tifa is ready to throw down at a moment's notice, and even wears leather gloves everywhere she goes just in case a fight comes her way. And if she decides to get really serious, Miss Lockhart busts out her two round, beautiful ultimate weapons. Don't you dare. The premium heart. <laughs> oh. Well, the premium heart increases Tifa's striking power I love it when Ban says, don't you dare. Over time as she builds limit energy. However, they lose this increase after Tifa uses her limit breaks and need time to charge back up. Oh, that sounds like it could be a problem. Oh, if she didn't also have magic. In Final Fantasy VII, there's a wide variety of magical ability granting gems called Materia. Any person can wield any materia, and it's up to the game's actual player to decide who gets what, giving Tifa no standard materia setup. However, thanks to the Dissidia Fighting series, we know Tifa prefers to carry fire and ice materia into battle. These fire and ice materia let Tifa conjure and wield fire and ice. Combine that with her freakish superhuman strength, and she's like an unstoppable powerhouse. Well, her immense power does come at a price. Her skills and speed and defense are somewhat lacking, making her something of a glass cannon. But to help make up for this, Tifa wears two armor pieces. She wears a ribbon on her arm in memory of her late friend Aerith. Come on, man. Don't bring that up. Yeah, that was sad. Which protects her from negative effects like poison and paralysis. She also likely wears the Minerva Band to defend from fire and ice. Glass cannon or not, her strength is ridiculous. She's strong enough to fight an embodiment of Sephiroth and throw giant monsters around like nothing. And there was the time she helped throw Cloud through the air to reach the flying monster Bahamut Sin. After leaving Tifa's hand, you can see a mock cone form around Cloud, which means Tifa must have helped throw him with enough force to break the sound barrier. That's awesome. Oh, Cloud's a lightweight. Come on, how hard can that be? Well, factoring in the weight of Cloud and his giant weapon... <laughs> He must have been thrown with up to 153 tons of force. Well, shit, talk about power. You don't want to mess with Tifa's strong, twin, firm... No... Fists. <laughs> She's got a really nice rag. I'm sorry, that laugh is so bad. Feels like you're flying, no, Titus, no. <laughs> no. My favorite character got destroyed. Favorite Final Fantasy character. Alright, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! <laughs> My god, we get to watch their reaction too. Hold up. Let me see some ideas. need to panic people just looking for someone i will take a strawberry sunrise though no ice thanks oh Sorry, shit i think you'd better turn yourself around and look elsewhere so does this mean no sunrise oh. <laughs> 
Tifa starts right out with a kick. There we go again, doing that again, huh? Oh, the premium hearts? Oh god. Oh shit. Well, this is cool music. This is from Ruby, by the way. She hasn't been using it. This is so awesome. Tifa's been shot before, though. All right. She eats Let's bullets for breakfast. Like She's slamming down on that wall pedal. Broke the premium hearts, huh? Nailed it. Hey <sighs> Cross another potential wife off the list. Tifa was naturally stronger and more experienced than Yang, but Yang's semblance quickly turned all Tifa's power against her. Even the Minerva Band, the best of Tifa's armor options to counter Yang's strength and shotgun blasts, was eventually overtaken by the semblance. Plus, while Tifa could lift creatures many times heavier than Cloud using her limit breaks, she never shows this kind of strength anywhere else, implying that this power is exclusive to those limit breaks rather than something she possesses naturally. And even though Tifa's premium heart increased in power over time, they reset after her limit breaks while Yang's power kept on rising. However, Yang's real trump card was her aura. Her semblance would have been useless if she could not survive Tifa's attacks. Luckily, her aura is durable enough to take a punch that shattered a concrete pillar about four feet wide, a feat which requires at least 1,400 tons of force. That's the equivalent of having 360 jetliners fall on your face. Yang's power just pulled through in a snap. The winner is Yang Zhao Long. <laughs> Bullshit. Next time on Death Battle. Hello, Chad and Ben and all you Death Battle fans. Oh, Wiz and Boomstick had a great scheme going on for a while there, having you follow them on Twitter to find out which of your favorite characters they were going to massacre in the next fight. Well, now it's my turn. You see this? It's the hard drive that contains all the Death Battle matchups and outcomes for the next year. And it's mine now. If you ever want to see your precious death battle again, well, you know what to do. To prove that I have the content, I will release the next matchup in the season finale of The Industry this Saturday. The name's John, John Francis McCullough, and death battle is mine. Well, all right. That's not really the hard drive, is it, Ben? <laughs> no, I got it right. Shit. No crap. All right. Well, we'll, we'll deal with that later. <laughs>
Hashtag okay. All right, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, uh, death battle. I'm nervous um, as hell and excited I probably should have ended it like a little bit earlier, <laughs> but another one. Well, Daniel my character lost. I've never seen my boyfriend it so happens. For anything his entire life. I call bullshit, but it doesn't matter because death battle doesn't go back on what they say. So I hope you guys enjoyed the death battle. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. I love that. Just saying that makes you feel warm inside, doesn't it? No. I mean, Raphael, Raphael and everybody else seems cool, but he's just like really hacking on hacking. Okay, so.